Okay, so the first thing you have to do is get your strip of bandage plaster wrap, bond de plâtre. You can get this at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or any place like that, possibly medical supply. It doesn't really matter which kind you get as long as it's a roll of the bandage. You're going to take it out of the package. It's very dusty, so you're going to want to put down plastic and some covering for whatever you're doing this on. And then you're going to want to cut it into the strips, as mentioned in the written material, the numbers of them that you need. So um, it cuts with regular scissors. It's pretty easy. And you're going to want to make sure you get a couple of big strips and um, then a number of different sizes of strips, both large and small, skinny and fat, um, so that you have everything that you need to make uh, the mask. And through the magic of speeding up video, this goes really fast, but this will take you about 10 minutes to do. You're going to want to cut some smaller pieces as well, um, right here for the nose. The smaller the pieces, the better. Obviously, you don't want too small, but um, you want a lot of different sizes and shapes of little pieces so that you can go around the nose. And then cut a couple extra. Then you should have a pile that looks something like this. Then you're going to want to put them in a little baggie and then clean up the dust. You're going to want to make sure you have a garbage bag some petroleum jelly. I much prefer the kind in the squeezy tube. It's just easier to deal with and unscented is best. Your strip bag, a headband to keep the head back, the hair back, a towel and a washcloth for dabbing, and then a bowl for water. It's a good idea to have makeup wipes and a cleanser for your face after as well. And the first thing you want to do is apply the Vaseline to the face of your partner. A nice liberal coat. You can't can't really stress enough how important it is you get into everything, get into the eyebrows, um, over the eyelashes, work it into the edge of the hairline. If there's a beard, really work it into the beard. Any facial hair, and yes, women have facial hair too, make sure that it's all coated in the Vaseline so that this is nice and easy to get off. And once that's done, you're going to take a strip, start with the large ones, dip it in the water, shake off the excess water, or you can drag it over the edge of the bowl to get the excess water off. You can also dab it on the towel or any combination thereof and place it on the forehead. It's good to start with the forehead and then just kind of work your way into covering the eyes and the cheeks. Smoothing it a little bit as you go. You don't want to press into the eyes but you do want to make sure that this fits over the eyes. Just make sure that you do not cover the nostrils. Everything else on the face will be covered except the nostrils which will always stay open because obviously your partner needs to breathe. Have a care while you're doing this that you look for some uh, dripping water. There will be dripping water particularly in the ears. It tends to pool up in there and it gets very uncomfortable. So you're going to want to make sure that you keep track of that and that you check and that you dab your partner's neck and chin and ears pretty consistently because they obviously can't. So this is going to go nice and fast which this won't take um, very much time. It'll take more time than taking the video because we're speeding this up. You see the last thing that we do is go around the edges with the skinnier strips. Make sure we have a nice sort of semi-rounded edge that looks the shape of a store-bought mask. So we're dabbing the ears there and you can see it sort of dripping into her ears on the side. I'll get that in a minute. And you go around the nose with those little tiny pieces molded around like it's clay almost. And then when you do that, then you're going to go for the second layer, which we'll do exactly the same way as the first layer. Just start with the forehead, go around the sides, make sure that everything's reinforced. You don't want too many layers on here. Two layers is really enough. It's okay if it overlaps a little bit, but you really don't want more than two layers or else it will take forever to dry. Make sure the nose is nice and smooth. Dab all that stuff out of the ears. Then we're going to take a, a strip. We're going to dab it in like it's a sponge and we're going to use the extra plaster on that strip to smooth the mask going around. And every, you know, it, it'll eventually sort of run out of plaster and get too smushy and you'll just cast it aside and take another one. It's best to use the big strips for this because they have more plaster in them. You're going to want to close up all those little tiny holes in the mesh of the bandage, which you can do with the plaster and the extra strips. So you're taking another one here, dunk it in the water, just dab. The smoother you can make this mask, the easier the finishing will be and the better the mask will look. There's a certain amount of it you will not be able to get smooth. Don't stress too much about it. We're going to go nice and fast here. Notice that the mask is not on the hairline and that it does not go down into the uh, jaw neck area beneath the face. Keep it right on the face. Then you're going to want to clean all this up while the mask is drying. You're just going to leave your partner to dry. After they dry, you're going to come in, you're going to put your hands on the side of the mask. You're asking them to blow out through their mask 
mouth, excuse me, and then you're going to lift it right off. You'll know when it's time to come off because the mask will be cool to the touch, particularly on the cheeks. And now we have a nice mask that looks just like Paige. It's going to have some little rough edges on the sides, but we will take care of that in finishing, which is where we're going to go next. So for finishing the mask, you're going to need an X-Acto knife or a pocket knife or a Leatherman knife, some scissors. Um, you're going to need some felt or some moleskin, uh, whichever one is easier. I have some felt left over from the Sparrow, so it's in funny little shapes. You're going to need elastic. You're going to need Mod Podge matte glue, not the spray, the glue. And then gesso, which is a uh, canvas primer that you can get at an art store. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick up the mask and you're going to draw um, around where the eye things are. You can use sort of the eyeball shapes that are in the mask. And draw freehand just, you know, around so that you know where you're going to cut. And then after you do this, on both eyes, make sure they're even, and then redraw them if you need to so that you get nice, clean eye holes that look generally the same shape as the eyes in the mask. Now this next part gets a little bit scary, but um, don't worry. Um, you're going to cut the edges of the mask to make it smooth and rounded on the edges. You don't want to bend the mask as you're doing this. You want to be really careful. And it will cut pretty easily, and you can get it nice and smooth like this. You won't be able to do anything, do anything about um, sort of small imperfections, but you want a nice clean edge. See how pretty that looks. Great. Then wipe out any extra Vaseline with the dry paper towel that might have been left in the mask. And then we are ready to cut the eye holes, which is probably the scariest part. And you're gonna go and go one little stroke at a time. Just gonna work the X-Acto knife in there, chunk it down, and then lift it out, and then go to the next piece. You won't be able to saw it like you do, you know, um, with something else. You're going to have to kind of do one little poke at a time. And if you go nice and slow and you make sure that your fingers are not behind the eye hole that you are cutting, that they are holding a different part of the mask so you don't stab your finger while you do this, and I have to say that because I've done it before, um, when the eye hole starts to come loose you're going to want to support it a little bit from the back so that it doesn't break, uh, which will usually happen when you get to the end of cutting the eye. But for the first little ridge here, just nice and slow and sure. Now we're going to go fast here through the magic of filmmaking. Yay, and oh, there's one eye. Great. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And you're going to check them and make sure that they're kind of even and they look right. This one's not quite right, so I'm going to fix it right there. And then, you know, cut off all the extra little threads and anything that you can. Use some sandpaper to clean up those edges. And now we're ready to put gesso on. So we're going to put the gesso on, just like paint. I like to use these little cutting boards because you can use them as a palette. Mix it up, make sure it's uh, well shaken. And then just do a nice painted coat over the, just the front of the mask with the gesso. You don't have to do the gesso on the inside. Particularly trying to glue down some of those little threads in the eye holes and whatnot. And this will take, you know, five to ten minutes to dry this, this coat here. If you have a fan, it's best to use a fan while you do this. And then we're going to go over the same thing with Mod Podge, which is our glue. We're going to use it like it's paint, starting with the inside of the mask, and make sure you get every little bit of it so we close up all those holes and we give a nice seal so that the moisture of your breath will not destroy the mask. Uh, pay particular attention to the eye holes because we want those to be as smooth as possible, not have any pokey things or little threads or anything hanging out that will stick into your eye and make it uncomfortable to wear. Uh, make sure you get the edges as well, you know, this kind of little tapping stroke here so that we get a nice smooth edge. It'll just make everything stronger and easier. So we're going to speed this up just a little bit. After you do the inside, and it's important to do the inside first because then you can do the outside while the inside is drying, which is what we're going to do here. Again, paying special attention to the eye holes, making sure that they're as smooth as they can be. Then we're going to leave it to dry with our fan. Yay! This will take about 10-15 minutes again for this layer to dry, and then we're going to go on to a second coat of the exact same thing painting the Mod Podge over first the inside of the mask and then the outside of the mask. You want to control drips as much as possible so that you don't get blobs of glue sort of stuck. And they will particularly come out through the nose holes when you're doing the inside of the mask. You will turn the mask over and it will have a runny nose, so just make sure you clean up the runny nose on the front. Again, pay special attention to those eye holes. Make sure they are as smooth as they can be. Even if that means you have to do a third or a fourth coat, you want a really nice smooth eye hole because you will be very happy about that later. 
And then when you finish the second coat of the Mod Podge, you can leave it to dry. You can do other coats of it if you'd like, but two will be sufficient. Then we're going to take the X-Acto knife and we're going to go to the side of the mask, just to the side of the eye, about maybe a quarter inch, or not quarter inch, a half inch to three quarter inch in from the edge of the mask, and just twist the X-Acto knife until you get a nice little round hole. And you'll have to do this from the inside and the outside to get the right shape hole. It'll be a little bit uh, powdery stuff will come out, that's fine. And then do the same thing, of course, to the other side once you get that. It doesn't have to be very big um, because the elastic itself is only 3 8 inch. Once you get both of those in the sides, you can then thread the elastic in. Now we're not going to finish this step on the film because I don't have page here to fit it on. So um, I'm just going to leave it here for now and I'm going to finish it when I see her. But when you do finish this, what you'd want to do is go here and sew the elastic right there by the edge, not on the edge so that it's pressing against it, but just to the side of it, right here. And then you'll have, you can do a double band or a single band, whichever works better for you. If you tend to wear ponytails, a double band is good. Then you're gonna fit the felt for the inside. The forehead by the eye, you know, above the eyes, um, up to the forehead is a good place to put it. I've got these funny shapes because they were used for something else, um, but you can just use felt squares and it makes it a little bit easier. I have really good scissors, as you can see. So you want to cut the pieces first and kind of lay them inside the mask, one up here by the eyes, and then you're going to want two sort of triangle-shaped pieces um, underneath each eye. And it will kind of go into the nose a little bit, um, which is fine, so that this will sit forward from your eyes so that, again, your eyes can be comfortable and your eyelashes don't get stuck. And do a triangle piece for the other eye as well. This is a little easier if you're not trying to make <laughs> a different shape. And then a little piece for the upper lip. You get this sort of little thing. You don't want to put it inside of the nose or over the mouth itself because the moisture will be gross. Then you're going to paint Mod Podge glue on the inside of the felt and then glue it into the places that you placed it. Voila! That'll take a little bit of time to dry, but you are basically done. So then you will take your mask, you will put it inside of your shoe box, and you are now ready to go.